Um, did the outlaws reach out about anything? Did they have anything to say about it? So the outlaws is multiple facets. You know what I'm saying? It's in theory, we would like to think of it as one group, right? But it's a bunch of grown ass, you know, honorable men who have different perspectives. So I think Edie understood what I was trying to do. Um, I don't think it's about him validate what I'm trying to do. I think he understood what I was trying to do and my position and being from where I was from. Uh, I never talked to Muta about it, but I'm sure um, we'll somehow eventually chop it up about it. Um, what's the other brother from the IE? Um, the boy you know, Noble, maybe? Noble. Yeah. Um, he said some fucked up shit. He said something to me that I didn't like, but Again, like I say, if that was my homeboy, I probably, I wouldn't, actually, I wouldn't even react emotionally. I would have got clarity. I wouldn't even act emotionally or say something. For sure, the type of nigga I am, he could have just reached out and said, hey, G, what's up? Like, he know the type of nigga I am. He could check my pedigree. He know what's up with me, even if he didn't know me. And we have met. Uh, Storm, she had a fit. I mean, she was online, just rah-rah and all of that. But, you know, that's how that shit go. You know what I'm saying? It's like. Dre talk shit, Dr. Dre, you know what I mean? Motherfuckers was talking shit, but I always stood on the fact that I, I didn't mean no disrespect. It wasn't disrespect. I don't give a fuck what none of them said. I never disrespected Tupac a day in my life. Like I'm a real Tupac fan. I grew up listening to Tupac music. I respected what he was on, but I don't give a fuck who it is, man. If it's a lesson to be learned from any story, it's our responsibility to tell the future, the next story. Feel me? That shit might have stopped somebody from joining the gang. So, um, I, I I really never sat down. I wanted to sit down with them and kind of get their take on it, but it just ain't happened. Okay. Um, going back to the Lakewood Mall thing, um, did you back in the back in the time? Did you hear about the bounty that supposedly like Puffy had on those death row chains? Hell and no. Do you think man. that? No. Man, that shit bullshit. I I love the I love the sack for the story make the story much more compelling, but trust me if it was some if it was some bounties on chains and Cribs knew niggas would have been knowing because they would have shared the information to everybody. It's the South Sides for sure wouldn't have been the only ones that knew. They would have told some other niggas, hey man, there's some money on these like when money is on chains when shit is happening, everybody know. It ain't just one or two niggas that know. You know what I mean? Everybody know. So if it was if it was bounty on death row chains, that shit would have flew around the city. You know how many niggas would have been rampant on them niggas for them chains? Man, niggas would have been, what kind of bounty? 40, 50,000, 10 bucks in 96? Yeah, niggas would have been, feel me, going crazy. They've been trying to do everything to try to get one of them chains. So I didn't hear about it, but you know, again, I think it makes the story sound better. I don't believe it. Cause I for sure, we close enough to where we would have heard. But again, you know, that don't make it right. That don't make me right. But yeah, I never heard nothing about it. How much was the money? I think it was like 7,500 or 10,000. Yeah, 7,500, that's an Impala. That's a 64 Impala. Nigga finna go crazy. For, boy, them niggas been fighting everywhere they went. 7,500 in 1996. Man, that's the cleanest rig on the streets. 17 inch Dayton's, Kenwood and all that. Man, niggas been going crazy. 7,500? Shit, you can put 7,500 on a nigga chain right now. John, I can get you anybody chain in the city. <laughs> Whoever you think chain you want, nigga. 7,500? Yeah, I got they chain. 7,500? Yeah, and it's more than three chains? Man, Death Row, they might have had 20, 30, 40 chains circulate. Man, they'd have been trying to get dads and corrupt. <laughs> nigga, nigga, niggas from 60 would have been trying to get corrupt. Corrupt, give me your chain, man. We're going we to play it off. Dads, give me the niggas from 20s and then say, Dads, give me your chain. We got to play this song. What? 7,500 in 1996? Yeah, that's the clean. That's the Grand National. Yeah, nah, yeah. I, I can't believe it. I don't believe it. What yeah. Red say? Do Red say? Red, do Red believe the bounty was real? He does. Yes. Yeah. Red's full of shit. <laughs> Red's no goddamn <laughs> well. If it was 7,500 on anything in Los Angeles, it'd have been. A, It'd have been a thousand attempts. You had to document them attempts. 7,500 John in Los in Compton and Watson, Los Angeles in 96? Nigga, you could have, 
That's almost, that's a down payment on the house in Watts, 20%. I ain't lying, dog, that's some shit. 7,500, who chain you want right now? Who chain you want? I feel like send my little niggas on them today. And just to be clear, in 96, you were how old? Like, 16. were you in high school? 16, yep. 16, okay. But all I would right. heard that. Uh, at 16, for sure, we'd have, me and all my little pack would have been on that for 16. We'd fuck that. We'd have been trying to. <laughs> Ooh, 7,500, that's boy. We'd have had regals and colors around. All of us would have had a regal and colors. 7,500 colors, about $1,000 a clean colors. The colors right now, that's about $7,096. Colors, that colors was $1,000. Oh, yeah, we'd have all had colors at that point for 7,500. Okay. Um, did you ever talk to any of Tupac's family members after the video? Did yeah. anybody reach out to you, say anything? Yeah, I talked to Billy. I think it's his cousin. Um, it was it was it was a great conversation. He he just wanted to make sure it didn't come from a malice place. Mo Prem is a homie, and I never talked to him, but from one of my partners, he felt some kind of way. But Mo Prem could have, you know, if Mo Prem really wanted to talk to me, you know, Mo Prem got my number. But um. Yeah, I talked to that person and somebody else. Uh, but nah, not a ton of people. Okay. Um, if you could go back, would you record it again, knowing all the yeah. the, the, the problems that it's not yeah. problems, but the drama that it stirred up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had to make it. I had to make it. Um, you know what? I make gangster rap. You know what I'm saying? Um, and most people... Uh, uh, most people, I had a conversation with Mob James about it, and that was an interesting conversation too. Shout out to James, but he was saying it was just the title. He's like, man, it's really the title that fucked niggas up. And I was thinking to myself, like, I didn't think the title was that bad because, like, I really was thinking, like, Romeo must die or John Tucker must die. I wasn't thinking, like, literally, like, Cause that's not how we talk. We don't say, oh, that nigga must die. We'd be like, I'm gonna kill that nigga. So I didn't think of it from like to be regurgitated, like to be digested by niggas to think like literally, I, like I was, I'm thinking of a film. Like I just made this dope film. Feel me? I'm gonna present it to everybody. So I was thinking Romeo must die. John Tucker must die. You know what I'm saying? And uh, I wouldn't change nothing. I would have made the, the song faster. I think the song is too slow. I would have made it closer to Murder Was the Case, the speed of that song. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. I think a lot of the problems, too, and Reggie mentioned this as well, that um, it's not so much a problem. It's just the fact that for years, everybody's heard the story from Tupac's point of view. They've never heard it from Orlando's point of view or, quote unquote, from the Crip side of that whole situation. So um, I think, you know, with you telling it almost like a movie, um, that just people weren't, you know, they never took the time to look at it through the lens of the other side, through Orlando or through, you know, the South Side s side of everything that went down. And you know what's funny? I never, and I remember Reg was telling me that. He was like, yeah, um, you know, you're telling the Crips side. I'm like, Reg, this is the blood side of the story. This is the street side of the story. See, there's a mainstream, hip hop is... Imagine if all of hip hop just assimilated to the mainstream perception of life, right? Where it's like, life is good. The police are the heroes. You know, the police get your cat out the tree. They save lives. Imagine, then how do you get NWA? How do you find out what's going on with, you know what I mean? Uh, 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 re you know, uh, um, the riots. Uh, 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 rest in peace, the brother that got beat down that was driving a Hyundai. Um, I'm getting older, cuz. Um, Oh my God. Can we all get along? Y'all know what I'm talking about. That that started the whole riots. He got beat by the police, speeding in the Hyundai. Can oh, we all um, just get along? Rodney King? Rodney King. Um people didn't really vibe with NWA fuck the police. They in real time, it was frowned upon by all communities, black community, every community. The, the black churches was, you know, shunning them, everybody, right? That song didn't start to make sense until people saw Rodney King get his ass whipped on tape. But imagine if they said, you know what? Well, we're not going to talk about the police minus our 
you know, our understanding of, of their existence. We're just going to simulate with the mainstream thought. To me, that's what people, I felt people wanted me to do. Like, well, you know, Tupac is a hero. He's the, you know, this, that, and the third. So you, he couldn't possibly, there could not be another side, right, that you can explain about the life. And it's like, that's not true. Like, Tupac is a mainstream, successful, especially at this time. Tupac is, you know what I mean? Like, revered like Jesus to people to some degree. You know what I mean? Like, so th his following is mainstream. It's just apple pie. It's a bunch of people who just become fan of a dead black man that they feel like they can study versus my experience growing up with him. He was somebody like I was telling, you know, the homie here now, I was explaining to him. I'm like, Tupac almost kind of was like the victim in real time. Like he was the person you rooted for. He was the underdog. I don't think they see Tupac as the underdog. I think Tupac to them was the hero from the first day and he was always the guy. He To us, he was the guy that came out that was positive, that your mother would buy you his music and be like, yo, listen to him. Like this dude really respect women, blah, blah, he's about black empowerment. That's how his CD was presented. In every story, even when the, the shooting happened in Atlanta with the police, you heard he was being framed for some his uh, somebody else around him did. It wasn't never a thought in real time that he did it, you know. So it was always the system was fucking with Tupac, different politicians. You know what I'm saying? People framing him for stuff, framed for rape. He was like the underdog. Today, like nigga, he was Thanos the whole time. He was like this nigga that was just like the nigga and everybody was scared of him and he walked in the room and niggas jumped on chairs and it's like that's not cuz's experience when i was growing up but the the point of me telling the story like i didn't tell a crip side of the side i told the streets the the street urban side of the story how we see morality how pride is so important and delicate to us that we can't accept you fucking us up because i'm going to make a joke about you like you know how many jokes that nigga would have had, feel me? How many problems that would have caused in his life if he lets that ride? Like, if a nigga owe him for some work, you know, a nigga owe him for a half ounce or an ounce, feel me? Nigga like, nah, I ain't get, you know, fuck that nigga. A nigga like, oh, I do this to you. You ain't do that to Tupac when I was whooping on your ass. That's what's next. Niggas know that's how we do it. So I was telling our morality, how we live. So to me, it's not the crip side, it's the crip, the blood side, anybody who lives this street urban lifestyle. You know what I'm saying? Um, I just looked at it. There's a mainstream perspective of the story. And then there's our perspective, the streets. So I, I don't even, I, I stand by the fact that, you know, Pac, you know, saw this in heaven, was like, man, that nigga hard. You know what I'm saying? I, I believe that because this is his energy. This is Pac's energy, this Scarface energy when I made the song. I really believe in that.